Welcome to Monaco. Thank you. Tell me about your experience so far here. Well, I'm kind of uh, overwhelmed uh, because I've never been here, so, uh, and I've always wondered if I would ever get here, and, and then this uh, this happened, and uh, I'm just um, kind of in awe of, the, of the, this whole this huge event, and also the beauty of this this, this town. Great. Have you had a chance to meet other actors? Perhaps you don't see so much new faces. I was told when someone I, I asked someone about had they had they ever been to this festival, and they said the great thing about this is that you see people that you don't expect to see. And last night I ran into like a woman I hadn't worked I worked with 25 years ago, Rena Sofer, who's on The Bold and the Beautiful, and uh, Thomas Gibson, and Jason Priestley, who I know I haven't seen for years. So it was just like um, it's you really I. You know, anytime you walk into a big gathering, you're always nervous, and I'm always nervous, and think, you know, who will I talk to, and will anybody, you know. And it was just so pleasant and lovely. Tell me a bit more about your new show, about Legends of Tomorrow, about your show. Were you in intrigued by the whole comic book thing as a child? You know, I, this, I, I'm, I'm sort of like the last person, really, to, to get on this wagon. Or this train, I, I guess, because it's moving very quickly. Uh, uh, but I am intrigued because uh, I, I'm so impressed by the fans and the the response to the show Legends of Tomorrow, which is the show I'm on, uh, is, is uh, remarkable. Uh, and people who are fans of this genre really know a lot about it. And I'm I'm just sort of feeling finding my way and sort of you know little baby steps. Uh, but uh, I, 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 love, I love being part of it because it's something I never thought I would do. Now I heard there could be a four show crossover coming up uh, yes. with some of the different shows. Tell me about that. Is that going to happen? Would it work? I know their intention is to make it happen. It's very tricky because really I, I think what people don't understand is the scheduling nightmare of getting you know, a lead from a show you know, having to work or a day or two on another show completely disrupts all the schedules. It, it, it's like a domino effect. And we experienced that last season in Legends. I didn't do a crossover, but a couple of the cast members did. And there were days when we were supposed to start, you know, at 7 a.m. and we couldn't start till 5 p.m. because the other person wasn't finished yet. And then the costume hadn't been delivered to the... So all of that, which is so no one wants to really hear about. But I'm telling you as, the, as an actor, that's my concern. Uh, because it's, it's so difficult to get these shows done in the time allotted that they have to, it has to be very carefully orchestrated. So, having said that, it'll be fantastic because for the fans, there's nothing better than watching Supergirl, you know, up here on The Flash or vice versa, and that's, that's the fun of it. Now, you also were one in one of the hallmark shows of all time, Alias. Oh, thank you. Do you remember you. when you first found out about that show, when the show first started getting the success that it did? Why do you think it hits, it hits such a chord with people? I think uh, I can tell you my the first thing I knew about Alias was when I read the, the pilot script that JJ wrote, and I and I, I it's always about the writing for me, uh, uh, as Dick Wolf said last night on the stage. Uh, the writing when I read that script, I thought this is arguably the best pilot I have ever read, and by the way, remains that to be the best. I think it's all about the writing. I think it also. The fact that the concept it was unique in that it was it was really a show about a family who happened to be spies, and that was a new idea in a way. Uh, and and it was this this sort of because there was a lot there was a lot of you know it was just like father daughter mother da a lot of that. And I think that's what what really pulled people in. And then there's this fantastical aspect of it, and I think that's true of our show now. It's it's about this group of people who happen to have superpowers, but they're just trying to get along, basically, and, and achieve the same end. So Alias, but Alias was, I think, one of the first of its kind, and I think it changed television. I, I say that, you know, I was a part of it, I know, but I, I, I just feel like it was a unique, unique thing. Now, a lot of our viewers might not know that you have a big musical theater background as well. It is becoming the new trend to start doing these live, live Grease, live The Wiz. Yes. Would you yourself like to do a I, live musical? I would be terrified to do it, but yes, of course, I'm always thinking, why didn't they ask me? Oh, I know, because I can't, I'm not available. But, but uh, yes, I'm, I'm excited about Hairspray coming up. Uh, and my friends are actually two of the producers uh, of, of, those, of those shows. 
uh, uh, Neil, uh, Neil Merritt and Craig Zayden. And so I think it's fantastic because I also think it introduces a lot of young kids to, to, to the musical theater, which they wouldn't necessarily be, you know, know that much about. And uh, uh, I, think it's, it's, I think it's great. If you could do one, which one would you do? Um, I would do, uh, what would I do? I always wanted to do Fiddler on the Roof. That was the one I, I there was a moment when I almost was going to play Tevia mm -hmm. for that team and it was during a period where it was the world was a little well as unshaky as it is now we couldn't go film where they wanted to and so it all kind of unraveled but I've always loved that show and I, I feel and I'm, I'm a, a you know a, a Russian Jew from uh, my heritage and so I thought I would I could really relate to doing that